Now, last module, we looked at custom functions and how we could use them to uh, actually build some custom functionality, some basic custom functionality into our spreadsheets. In this module, we're going to look at comments and documentation, and we'll also get a little bit into some of the mathematical things that we can do with, with numbers in our Google Sheet. So, first off, comments. Comments are basically just a message that you can send to yourself. They're like a really, uh, a really simple, straightforward um, sentence, maybe their description, but the idea behind comments is that you can use these two forward slashes and you can have App Script ignore everything that it is that you're going to say after those two forward slashes up until the next line. So you can see here everything that we put into the, co into the program after a forward, these double forward slashes, it's going to be ignored. And you can also use this to kind of block processing. So if we write something and we don't want to run that line anymore, if we're trying to figure out how to perform a calculation, we can use this, this uh, this double forward slash to kind of block that and that's going to tell App Script to just ignore that line completely. Don't even do anything with it. Um, we also have multiple line comments. You can see here if we perform a multiple line comment we use at the forward slash and then the asterisk and th that will allow us to write comments that span multiple lines in our App Script. Uh, they, they end with this asterisk forward slash so it kind of you know it's like an open and a close. Um, they can span multiple empty lines. The, the, you can actually have multiple forward slashes and asterisks, but as soon as that asterisk forward slash is encountered, uh, you're actually going to end the comment. So we can embed comments inside of other comments as long as we don't have this, a this asterisk forward slash that's going to end exactly what we have. But these can be good for describing longer, you know, more sentences, more description of, of what you're doing in your code. JS.comments, these are actually used to document and describe your functions. So these are used um, a little bit more specifically for talking about what your code does. Uh, these are going to be useful because it's going to show you what these do in the app script, uh, which is, you know, when you're, when you're writing a, a, your function in Sheets, when you're using your function in, in Google Sheets, you'll see that, you know, this is going to give you a lot of information or somebody else who's using your code at some point will have a lot of information. So they start with forward slash asterisk asterisk. So you have, you can see here, forward slash, asterisk, asterisk. That's going to start off your js.comment. Um, we also have these annotations, these tags that we use. So we have at param. Uh, that describes what we're going to have as a parameter, and we give it a type. Here we're just going to say string, so this describes the first parameter to this function. So if we have at param and then the type, we'll see string. We'll also see number. Um, you know, we can use this to kind of explain what the function does. Uh, or what the function does with the parameters. And then we also have an at return, which talks about what this function gives back. What is this going to send back to the sheet when we use it? Uh, we can also use these to identify custom functions. This is really great because it helps with autocomplete and gives us all the documentation inside of our spreadsheet. So when we use at custom function in, in one of these JS doc comments, we actually get uh, a lot of this information in our Google Sheet. Um, we also might want to have a, a js.comment at the co top of our file. This is good just because it, it gives us a chance to explain what the file does, what all of the functions do, if they work together, you know, kind of how they operate together. Um, it also allows you to talk about who wrote this and what the version is. So maybe you have a version 1.0, maybe there's a version 2.0. Uh, you can kind of manage your versions that way and it gives you the capability to uh, kind of explain what version this is. We also can have white space. One thing we haven't really looked at, but uh, white space in our app script is okay. Um, app script will ignore all of the consecutive spaces, all of the consecutive end lines. They don't mean anything. So you can see here, this first, you know, using uh, one space in between everything is all right. And that's typically what we see. But sometimes there might be some separation so that we can align our names and our text or so that we can put, uh, you know, our assignments kind of in a, in a very simple table. So you can see here, this is okay too. This this will also run. We can have multiple spaces here, and we can also have tabs. So this you can't see a tab, but you but this is a tab in between the Z. So any blank lines, any tabs, any any spaces, all of these are just ignored as long as they're not within you know say a string for example, or not within a variable name. Uh, we can have all of our keywords like var, and we can have all of our variable names and our equal sign and our strings. They can be separated by as many blank li lines and as many uh, spaces and tabs as we like. 
So the other thing that we can do in AppScript that we haven't really gotten into too far is numbers. We can actually use numbers as well as just strings, and we can do a lot of interesting things with numbers. Once we have numbers, uh, we can start performing mathematical calculations. So you can see here, we, we can just return numbers. You know, this is a, a really simple function that's just going to return the number seven, which probably isn't super valuable in practice, but shows how you can actually just use a number. Uh, we also have this function that triples a value, and you can see we have an asterisk. We don't use the x for multiple multiplication we use the asterisk here so you can see value times three is what we're going to return and then we've got this nice JS doc uh, comment that's going to explain what the parameter is how we return it what that this is actually a custom function so it kind of completes what we're doing there now there are a lot of operations there are a lot of things that we can do addition and subtraction are pretty straightforward multiplication we perform with the asterisk uh, division we use the forward slash so you can see here six divided by three six divided by three is two um, we also have modulo which is going to be important uh, at some point and that gives us the ability to identify what the remainder of a division operation would be so if we had you know six modulo Five, for example, the remainder from that division would be one. So six modulo five would give us one. Uh, the operations follow the normal order that you learned in probably high school or maybe middle school math. Uh, anything that's enclosed in parentheses is going to happen first. So you can use parentheses to enclose your uh, enclose your calculation. Multiplication and division will also happen before addition and subtraction. Value every all of the evaluation happens from left to right. You know so. Uh, you can see here 6 plus 3 times 5, that's not going to be 9 times 5, that's going to be 3 times 5 plus 6. And 10 minus 4, that's going to give us 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So pretty much straightforward math, just like we might have learned before. And then there's some more modulo examples. 5, 5 modulo 2 is 1, 12 modulo 5 is 2, so 12 divided by 5 would have a remainder of 2. 13 modulo 5 would have a remainder of 3. 15 mo modulo 5, we'd have a remainder of 0 if we divided by f or 15 by 5. So um, modulo, we're going to see we can use that for a couple of things, you know, more advanced, but, you know, it's, it's pretty good to have that, even though it might not be obvious at this point. So functions can also be called from other functions, which is kind of cool. So in AppScript, uh, we can actually call functions um, with other functions. So you can see here, this function here, we had that triple function and the seven function before. We can actually combine those, and you can see we're just passing the result of the seven function as a parameter into the triple function. So it allows us to chain functions together, and it allows us to engage in something that's really valuable when we get into writing a lot of code, which is called code reuse. We can use right, we can write a function and then use that function over and over and over again so that we have the capability to not have to write that code again. We can kind of just use that uh, as it's written and call it without having to copy and paste because if you have to copy and paste a lot of code that gets really really tedious and uh, it also becomes a problem if you copy and paste code a lot of different places and you have to make a change now you have to change that everywhere where you've copied and pasted the code which is not really a great way to, to have to live your life. So. It's, uh, but we can call functions from other functions. We can also have many parameters. So you can see here we have an add function, and this add function is going to give us, or going to have a couple of different parameters, not just one parameter, and you can see we're adding multiple parameters together. So now that we know a little bit about number values, and we know a little bit about how to work with strings, and we know a little bit about parameters, and we know a little bit of, uh, of arithmetic, we can actually do many more interesting things within our Google Sheets. So in the next few videos, we're going to walk through some examples and look exactly at what we can do to, to kind of do a perform a little bit more coding, perform a little bit more calculation, use these custom functions, and uh, really start adding some value to, to what we can do with app scripts and Google Sheets. Thanks for watching.